So a great example of where we're deploying our autonomous solutions uh, for industrial settings is a, a project that Street Drone is doing with the UK government at Nissan's car plant in Sunderland. Um, it's a proof of concept along with some industrial partners, for instance, Nokia and Nissan themselves and, and, and Vantec who have a, an on-site warehouse. The purpose of the Nissan project that we're doing with DCMS and the Department for Transport, the Sunderland Council, a number of universities, um, we're trying to um, inject um, more technology into the, into the supply chain. We're developing skills in terms of autonomous vehicles and other aspects, and also um, to develop productivity or increase productivity in Nissan's manufacturing plant um, in Sunderland. So there are financial benefits uh, of autonomy within these kind of industrial uh, contexts, uh, both for the operators of the industrial complexes, but also um, for the operators of the vehicles. We want to upskill the operators of the vehicles to, to go from being inside of the vehicles to being in a remote, remote location, for instance. And to do that, they need increased training and understanding of a, of a system that's, that's different from the one that they currently drive. But equally, they need those same skills of maybe reversing a, a trailer into a, into a, a, a bay. That's a complex task that, that um, skilled class one HGV drivers need. We've also obviously got an HGV driver crisis on, uh, which doesn't like, look like it'll be resolved anytime soon. So there's benefits to the operator of having availability of, of autonomy over and above the, the HGV. So the most difficult aspects of uh, connected logistics is probably the fact that we have more than one vehicle in the environment trying to do a productive mission for the customer. So that vehicle has to interact with a lot of other systems outside the vehicle itself. Getting your vehicle to navigate autonomously from point A to point B is just the first piece of the puzzle. Uh, that vehicle has to be doing a, a productive job while that happens. So first of all, it has to pick up a, a load from, uh, from one location and therefore it needs to be dispatched by some kind of command and control centre or integrated solution with the, with the logistics provider. And it has to navigate to its destination and then the destination has to be expecting that vehicle to arrive and to be able to unload it and, and for the goods to be able to carry on with their journey. Coupled with the fact that there's likely to be several or, or do many dozens of vehicles interacting with each other, then optimising that is one of the challenges that we have so that the vehicles don't get in each other's way and, and operate efficiently. I think we're often asked whether or not autonomous technology can, do, can replace the, the human in every circumstance. And of course the answer is eventually yes. Um, we are really focused on where we can deploy autonomy to make a difference as soon as possible. Um, there's clearly a drive, for instance, to put autonomy into passenger vehicles. We don't think that's going to happen for a long time. You need extremely deep pockets. Google, for instance, deep kind of deep pockets. So we're trying to um, walk before we can run. And one of those areas is obviously in industrial settings where there's very controlled environments, where, for instance, the route at the Nissan Sunderland car plant it's about a mile long. Autonomy can do 90% of the job. Um, the other 10% is going to be done by remote driving, by teleoperation. Because at the moment, the, the, the maturity of the technology isn't where we need it to be in order to do all of the tasks safely. Over time, that will be 100%. But right now, we're using teleoperation to fill in the gaps where a human would normally have to fill them in. And we, we, we use a, a remote human in that case, if you like.